what can happen is that with the use of hyperthermia you should need uh, probably lower doses of radiation to get the same effect okay. and so less side effect. Uh, Dr. Montagnani, I would like to talk to you about hyperthermia and what has been your experience with it. Okay, I came to the knowledge of hyperthermia a few years ago. I was working in Siena on a protocol involving uh, hyperthermic perfusion of uh, pleural mesothelioma. Uh, I was fascinated about this uh, treatment approach, uh, so uh, we keep in touch with Professor Fiorentini who is uh, one of the Italian leaders of uh, hyperthermia and began training here in the Empoli Institution. Here I help him in performing external capacitive hyperthermia which involved the um, generation of high temperature in a specified region of the body to treat uh, li um, liver, lung and uh, other kind of metastasis. Specifically here we are performing two ways uh, to try to increase the result of hyperthermia because in my opinion uh, one limit of hyperthermia is uh, the impossibility to reach uh, uh, enough temperature to destroy the cancer cell and these temperatures are uh, almost widely recognized uh, in the range of uh, 43 degrees Celsius or more. Now you cannot reach that temperature and stay at that temperature in long enough without damaging surrounding tissue and the specificity to selectively heat the cancer without heating the, the surrounding tissue has not been developed, it's not technically possible. There are some ways to theoretically reach it uh, and one uh, of these ways is by delivering uh, nanoparticles, uh, magnetically, uh, magnetic nanoparticles. This uh, kind of approach uh, based on uh, Basically, these nanoparticles are uh, small uh, compounds, uh, spheric compounds of about uh, some nanometers in diameter that can be covered with some biological uh, molecules like polyethylene glycol, uh, albumin and others. They can be rendered stealth so, uh, stealth so they can uh, circulate long enough in the plasma and can accumulate uh, selectively in the cancer lesions. <coughs> Once they are put in the magnetic field, uh, external magnetic field, uh, they can heat uh, very efficiently and uh, reach very high temperature in the range of 70-80 degrees. Now it is technically possible to reach in the cancer uh, lesions uh, uh, enough concentration of these nanoparticles and we are uh, performing preclinical studies uh, and we hope to get to the clinical uh, level in the, in the next years. And this is the first kind of research that we are doing here. The second is regards the thermosensitizer agents. Uh, these are molecules uh, or drugs uh, that can uh, render the cancer cell more susceptible to hyperthermia. Mm, this is to dam try, we are trying to damage can to, to induce a significant damage also at lower temperature without the need to reach 43 or 43, 44 degrees. And how do you do that? The, there are several preclinical data basically involves the administration of low chemotherapic uh, doses uh, like cyclophosphamide or uh, we are um, investigating the possibility to induce that with proteasome inhibition Proteasome is a complex molecular machinery of cancer cell and there are uh, mm, published studies that show that if cancer cells have this proteasome inhibited they are more successful, susceptible mm -hmm. to the killing of hyperthermia. One agent that we have uh, tested is the sulfiram that is uh, a drug used to treat alcoholism and recently showed proteasome inhibitory activity, very strong proteasome inhibitory activities. So we have performed a phase one trial uh, that I showed the results in uh, the STM meeting and we saw that uh, the administration is feasible, is safe uh, and it seems to have, it seems to be uh, a synergy between hyperthermia and the administration of the sulfiram although we cannot say this because we did not perform a trial testing the efficacy, we are just testing the safety. Now we are moving we have demonstrated the safety and we are moving toward the, the efficacy.
when uh, you told me that uh, you really like hyperthermia as a concept, that you were fascinated, could it be that you found on hyperthermia something new, something promising in oncology, different from conventional therapy? Yeah, of course there's something uh, promising by, uh, with, with hyperthermia. Hyperthermia is a safe treatment that have uh, immunological effect, that have a chemosensitizing effect, and that is probably the most powerful radiosensitizing mm -hmm. agent. So uh, virtually any kind of molecule or drugs that we use uh, can behave differently and possibly more powerful in an hyperthermic condition. So surely deserve more attention that it has been given uh, since here. Basically, you have received the hyperthermia traineeship from Professor Fiorentino, yeah. who you said is a, is a, a leader in hyperthermia in Italy. Yeah. So you will be the continuation of his work. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope so. Since the hyperthermia increases the effects of chemotherapy and radiation, is it possible that there is less side effects using hyperthermia combined with the other? Uh, now. I would say at least the same side effects because I don't think that uh, hyperthermia has protective effects uh, uh, in radiotherapy or chemotherapy. What can happen is that with the use of hyperthermia you should need uh, probably lower doses of radiation to get the same effect right. and so less side effect but I, this, can, this, this point is not very clear. Very clear. So you are um, assisting and, and helping uh, Professor Fiorentini on the treatments. And there was something very interesting. A few minutes ago, you showed me how to perform a treatment. I, actually, we start a treatment on a person who is healthy. So um, that clearly proves that you can apply this treatment just to show it to me. Yeah. And there is nothing to be worried about. Yeah. No, we. In, our, in my experience, I saw just one side effect. The, the, there are, uh, of course, contraindication to this treatment, and this contraindication is uh, essentially the presence of prothesis uh, in the region treated, the metallic prothesis, uh, and of pacemaker, because you uh, apply an electromagnetic field that can interfere with pacemaker and that can uh, um, lead to problem with the uh, the process, but outside these specific situations, uh, the only problem that you can have if you have if you use uh, uh, too much power is that the patient feel burn, a burn, a sensation of burn or pain. Now the patient tell you, "I'm feeling burn, I'm feeling pain," and you lower the output with no consequences uh, of the patient. Since this hospital was open about a year ago, how many uh, patients have you treated? Uh, about 100. And um, do you remember the percentage rate of cure or patients? Yeah, it's, it is difficult to say that because uh, of many reasons. Uh, anyway, we get some interesting results. We got responses in, uh, of, in a glioblastoma patient, an astrocytoma, uh, metastatic ependymoma. And as a general statement, uh, it is difficult to see a lesion, uh, a cancer lesion treated with hyperthermia that goes in progression, so that, that, that grew during the treatment. So there is, I have the feeling that hyperthermia is able to give at least a stabilization of the lesions. It's more frequent to see that uh, the lesions you treat remains stable or response and the lesions outside the area treated progress, uh, grow or increase in number. Anyway, it is difficult to say that because you will need to have an homogeneous population with the same, uh, in the same condition and, and a randomized trial, for example, which should, we did not perform until now. Uh, Dr. Montagnani, besides Given a hyperthermia treatment, you still have time to, to go outside and, and, and give a presentation. So what are you going to do to Tucson in April this year? Uh, I presented to the results of our two experiments. The, um, the one testing uh, the um, hyperthermia, the capacity of hyperthermia in uh, peritoneal carcinomatosis. Uh, as a palliation treatment, because uh, we saw some kind of palliation in the pain and uh, in the gastrointestinal functions. And the other was um, 
presenting the results of our phase one trial with this Wolfram that I talked previously, uh, used as a proteasome inhibitory drug uh, as a thermo enhancer. Hey, could you tell me a little bit about the STM meeting? You were talking to me before that they did have meeting. Yeah, I, I found the STM meeting very, very interesting. Uh, I could point that there was uh, too few clinical, uh, uh, clinical aspects. Mm, there were many, many uh, physicians uh, and it was uh, more like uh, technology so regarding uh, how to develop hyperthermia and the capacity of hyperthermia, IFU uh, and uh, other kind of mm, radiofrequency ablation and other kind of hyperthermia. But I think that uh, there was uh, too few clinical studies uh, because th I think that the great point now is to perform big clinical trials uh, because without these trials the scientific community will hardly accept hyperthermia as a standard modality. And uh, you were mentioned also that in order to do a trial like that you need a collaboration of, yeah, of many institutions of because uh, uh, if to, to, to perform such a trial you will need to select a specific uh, uh, patient population and so it is difficult to have many hundreds of patients in that specific situation for a single institution. So uh, surely, definitely, a collaboration is needed. If you envision that collaboration, do you have an idea how can it be done? Probably like uh, encountering together and uh, I don't know. <laughs> but Probably least, you have the idea. Uh, I think it should, uh, it should come from uh, um, an institution like the ESHO, European Society of Hyperthermic Oncology, or the STM, which, uh, I guess, uh, open a call for trial, uh, get some proposal, uh, select uh, interesting trials, and involve uh, participating center. I think, I guess, that should be the way. Even though hyperthermia has very good results in combination with other standard therapies, what is the future that you see on hyperthermia? To me, the future of hyperthermia are nanoparticles mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it is uh, a technology that is now available. They are uh, cheap because they are cheap. They are easy to, um, to, to, to synthesize if you have the knowledge and if you have the equipment. They are safe nanoparticles of um, iron oxide are still in used as a magnetic resonance imaging uh, enhancer in the clinical setting so they are safe and they can um, hopefully guarantee that uh, specificity by selectively accumulating in the cancer uh, in the cancer lesion that you need to treat uh, to treat cancer with hyperthermia since I know a little bit of what you said and I know the lay person that who doesn't know anything about the scientific aspect, I understand that the nanoparticles is like a kind of chemotherapy that only the chemical agent is liberated when the heat is applied. Uh, this is one kind of nanoparticles uh, and this is a trial that is performing now in the Duke University. Uh, based on the administration, for example, of thermosensitive liposomes. So a uh, construct that uh, carry the drug inside them uh, and that are released uh, at a higher temperature. So you perform hyperthermia, 42 degrees, the drug uh, arrives in the site, for it um, frees the drug, and that is. But uh, there's another kind of uh, nanoparticles which are um, like uh, small fragments of iron oxide or other uh, mm, metallic, uh, metallic, proper, metallic element without uh, the chemotherapy who are able, uh, if put it in a, um, in a magnetic uh, field, uh, to increase the temperature at very high levels. I understand. Like 70, I <laughs> saw personally uh, <laughs> nanoparticles that push the temperature up to 70 degrees in, in less than 10 minutes. Yes. So they are very, very efficient. Yes, and now I understand. When the nanoparticles are right to the magnetic field, 
they increase the temperature because it's a, me a me magnetic mechanism. Much more than when they are not there. Yeah. Right. Dr. Montagnani, I really appreciate that. I think uh, showing a young doctor like you uh, doing hyperthermia, it will uh, bring some other young doctors to study hyperthermia. Uh, Thank hope. you so much, I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. region of the body, you can use the small applicator and the large one applicator. There is also one smaller applicator designed to treat cerebral uh, lesions. So this is used for deep. You cannot, it's very difficult to perform superficial because you have this water cooling uh, um, on the applicator, uh, cold water. Um, how many um, centimeters deep? Around uh, you have uh, thirty-seven percent power at uh, thirty centimeters deep. Thirty centimeters. Wow. So you can. Uh, for, um, most of the important of the the peak of the fast uh, subcutaneous tissue because mm -hmm. most the of the energy is lost in the. Tissues. So, if you treat very fast patients, these patients are difficult to treat the lesion. Probably you will not get the temperature you desire. Mm -hmm. Cater, uh -huh. medium. For liver, I prefer. You just put a slice of paper, slice of paper, and then focus the, the applicator over the hepatic area. Here. Push the applicator. So this I'm not going to move Then just select the patient. Rotate the patient. And choose the power and the time. In general, for an hepatic uh, uh, application, uh, we started with uh, 70 power, 70 plus 46 minutes. So we can perform also a longer session, about one hour or more. And uh, the power is really depending on the patient because there are patients who feel burn at lower power or patients uh, that feel uh, burn at higher power. The power chooses the highest that does not cause pain to the patient. You can read, you can read, you can do something while uh, waiting and uh, you just have to stay in this position for uh, at least one hour. Yes, yes, the feeling the patients uh, have is a, a warming of the skin. Yes, yeah, sometimes it happens that you can feel also a pain and burn, but it's just transient. Be the way that the moment that we decrease the power of the machine, the patient feels no more. Pain. No more.